Hey there geeks and gigats. Today I'm going to revisit the crow. Oh yeah. So the crow is one of my all time favorite movies it's one of those movies where i can remember the exact place time that i was when i watched it it was also one of those movies that i watched literally over and over again almost on a daily basis let's get into it the crow was released in 1994 and is a gothic supernatural superhero movie based on the james obar comic books of the same name. The movie was directed by Alex Preyas and written by David J. Shaw and John Shirley. The Crow tells the tragic story of our main sort of protagonist, Eric Draven. Um, he was played by the equally tragic Brandon Lee. Um, he plays a rock musician resurrected by a mysterious crow to avenge the rape and murder of his fiancée as well as the murder of himself. So before I get into the movie itself in more depth I want to discuss the sort of the obvious issue of Brandon Lee's death. Um, he was fatally wounded in a gunshot during filming. Um, he was killed by a defective blank ammunition round a rumour is the big gunfight of the film where he's up on a table and everyone starts firing into him, that's when he died. And then the guy that looks under the table actually looked at the dead Brandon Lee. That's completely untrue, that is not how it happened at all. Uh, it was actually the opening sort of memory scenes for the movie where Funboy shoots him in the back of the head. That A take of that is where it went wrong. Basically, the firearms expert had left the set. They were behind on a filming schedule, so a prop handler handed a gun over. There was a round, they use live rounds, but they take the gunpowder out and put something else in, so they flash and bang, but there's no projectile. But this live round with the gunpowder missing was lodged in the chamber. So when he fired the gun, blank round loaded just to bang, it fired through and hit with enough pressure, the, the real bullet lodged in the chain, chamber, and that basically went into Brandon Lee's in the abdomen, and he died six hours later in hospital, it was a sick, after six hours of surgery. Um, that was on February the 1st, 1993, and Brandon Lee was just 28 years old. Now, Brandon Lee is obviously the son of martial arts and martial arts expert and movie star Bruce Lee, who also died in quite tragic circumstances. So Brandon Lee's previous movies to note were Showdown in Little Tokyo alongside Dolph Lundgren, and that is a really enjoyable sort of buddy action flick where Brandon Lee's got some quite good comedic timing and quite the presence. And another film called Rapid Fire that I have seen, it's not as good, but it's still a good movie. Brandon Lee was trained in martial arts by his father and that is more on show in Showdown in Little Tokyo than Rapid Fire or The Crow. Um, after Brandon Lee's father, Bruce, died, I think he was eight years old, um, he carried on his training with his father's sort of head disciple, I think he was called, which is basically the, the most trained out of Bruce Lee's school. So the movie takes place on the 30th of October and is in, based in Detroit on what they call Devil's Night. Uh, Sar Sergeant Albrecht is at the scene of a crime. Uh, Sar Sergeant Albrecht is played by Ernie Hudson of Ghostbusters fame. Uh, he's at the scene of the crime where Shelley Webster has been beaten and raped and her fiancé Eric Draven lays dead in the street having been stabbed, shot and thrown out of a window. Uplifting stuff from the off there. Uh, the tragic couple were due to be married the next day on Halloween. 
Sergeant Albrecht meets a young girl by the name of Sarah who says she's a friend of the couple and they basically take care of her because there's issues at home for this young girl and Albrecht unfortunately has to tell Sarah that Shelley is dying and Sarah is our narrator for this movie. So we then fast forward one year later and there's a crow tapping on the headstone of Eric Draven's grave and this resurrects Draven who climbs out of his grave. Um, in the meantime the street gang responsible for the murders planning on setting fire to the city in their annual tradition basically pillaging smashing and setting fire to everything. Um, Eric returns to his abandoned apartment and gets flashbacks when he touches the door when he touches certain things in the property they give him flashbacks to what caused his death and he remembers the rape and he remembers T-Bird and his gang consisting of Tintin, Funboy and Skank so while going through these memories Eric throws himself out the window but catches onto the window frame and his hands have been impaled by the glass and when he looks at his hands he heals almost instantaneously and at this point he realises that he's got supernatural abilities so he then looks at some theatre masks that he's got on a mirror and proceeds to put that makeup on his face and it's quite a striking look and in doing research for this I discovered that the initial shots of Brandon Lee with the makeup on a makeup studio did it and he wasn't happy so he did the makeup himself and then he would go home after shooting with the makeup still on so through the film when it gets progressively more spread and wiped off and decayed that's Brandon Lee actually wearing the makeup offset, going to bed, getting up, not touching the makeup up, going back in. So through the movie, his makeup gets affected. And I think maybe that is where Heath Ledger got the inspiration for what he did with his Joker makeup. Is maybe it came from The Crow and what Brandon Lee did to the makeup to make it more realistic. So he dons the makeup, starts to, he's definitely got some form of bond with The Crow and then he sets about killing T-Bird and his gang. Um, I won't break down every death because most people have seen this movie. So while Eric is killing T-Bird, uh, Skank, one of the gang, observes it, realizes this guy he killed or helped kill a year ago is somehow back and killing off the gang members. And then he informs a guy called Top Dollar um, he's the head of a criminal organisation and the head of the underground and he runs this with the help of his half-sister slash girlfriend. Yeah, it gets really dark. So yeah, uh, Top Dollar is actually banging his sister. Oh wow, uh, there's a character called Gideon who corroborates the story after the crow or Eric Draven has gone into his pawn shop to get his engagement ring back and take a guitar basically set, smashes the place up, sets fire to it, great stuff. Top dollar with two people telling him there's some sort of supernatural revenge being after them, gets all of his gangs off the streets and into one building to basically set about making sure that the city burns and that they kill Eric Draven. Unbeknownst to them, Eric Draven is sat outside waiting because he's followed Skank to this den. So he goes in with only looking to kill Skank, but when the gang, gang open fire on him, there is a mass shootout, and it is quite the shootout. The entire action scene is absolutely astounding. Brandon Lee shows some of his martial arts skills off in this. The actual gunplay is out of this world. The track in the background, it really suits what's going on. The whole fight scene is one of my favorite shootouts ever in a movie. So Draven pretty much wipes out all of these gangsters and gang members and mobsters and whatever else is in the room. He leaves Skank for last, he kills Skank and Skank almost turns into a sympathetic character right at the edge or right at the end of his life. But Draven's job is to kill who killed his, him and his wife or soon to be wife, the job done. So Top Dollar, his sister and the right hand man Grange who's played by Tony Todd. I think I, w I watched this about four times before I realised that it was Tony Todd. It was the Candyman, but 
he doesn't look intimidating or scary in this movie and he hasn't quite got the gravelly voice which um, is quite kind of weird he looks more human in this than any other film I've seen the guy in because really he's a really creepy looking guy except for in this movie I think it's the glasses Eric returns to his grave with his mission complete but as he's ready to call it you know a day go back to the afterlife Sarah is being kidnapped by Grange the crow spots this and Eric with his psychic link to the bird sees it through the bird's eyes so Eric then goes to rescue Sarah and clearly they've set a trap for him so Grange shoots the crow it injures it but doesn't kill it but it takes away Eric's uh, healing abilities so Eric is for the first time in the movie vulnerable he actually gets shot and he's bleeding like a normal person would and he's in pain but he has to rescue Sarah so he basically gets into a gunfight fights his way to the top of this church with the help of our sergeant Albrecht and gets into a rooftop fight with top dollar and this fight is pretty cool it's hammering down with rain uh, top dollar's got a sword Eric has no weapons and is at risk of actually dying again. So he grabs the, the spire off the top of the church. Lightning hits him while he's holding it and really hurts him, but he turns it into a sword when he breaks it off. And the fight is pretty epic. Um, Eric looks to lose and then basically transfers all of his memories and all of the pain of Shelley's death that he's got from a psychic link with Albrecht because he's got different powers in the movie hands them or passes them through to top dollar by holding his face and transferring all of the pain and misery of 30 hours of trying to save Shirley's life and throws him off a roof and it's quite the fitting end the top dollar Eric and Shirley then reunite at the graves and Sarah and Sergeant Albrecht go on to their daily lives I really have skimmed over a lot of the movie there because to talk in depth would take it would take me hours so i was about 30 i was 13 when i watched this maybe 14 because it takes a while to come out in the uk back then uh when this movie was released and i was far too young to watch it in the cinema as it was an 18 rated so i had to wait for it to come out on video and um it was the definitive movie of my teens i was already into my rock and metal so this movie with this awesome soundtrack of rock and metal and this gothic tale of revenge was mind-blowing for a, a beardless comic book geek that loved metal. The soundtrack features bands like The Cure, and I did like The Cure anyway, but this is much more gothic and dark for The Cure, this track burn. And what a song. It's almost like the theme to the, to the movie. But also you've got Stone Temple Pilots, Nine Inch Nails, Helmet, Pantera and Rage Against the Machine all bands that I loved anyway and they were in the soundtrack to this really cool looking movie uh, but that's that's just a you know sort of half of the bands that are on the soundtrack and when I listen to the soundtrack as I've got here on CD I can place which song is in which scene in which part of the movie that's how much of an impact this movie had on me and, and how many times I've watched it I don't think I can state the effect this movie had on me and, and do it justice it was that movie um first time i watched it i've got an uncle that's only a few weeks older than me we watched it on video at the same time for the first time completely blown away rewound it back to the beginning and then watched it through again um and instantly i was like i've got to get this movie my parents bought it for me and they bought me like the special edition video that had brandon lee's final interview on the end and I really would get up early before school, watch sort of half the movie, go to school, come home and then watch the other half. This thing proper, I think this was the movie that got me into cinema even more so than Star Wars. It was the soundtrack, the feel, the, the, the storytelling, the acting, the action, everything in this movie just really appealed to, to me as a teenager. A tragic action masterpiece really hit home with me. To the point where I basically nicked my dad's long leather trench coat um, every Halloween for three or four years. I was the crow, I grew my hair out, did the makeup and all the rest of it. And then even like when I went to college, there was a Halloween party for something, straight away I was the crow. So were four other guys, but there we go. I was a very skinny crow as well. 
bedroom had crow posters everywhere. Um, I'd got a HMV, flick through the racks if there was a crow poster in there. I'll pick it up because this was a massive hit, this movie. Um, I also truly believe that this movie would have catapulted Brandon Lee into superstardom. The charisma he showed as a movie's lead in this and showed on a little Tokyo, he could have been a very big deal. People seem to say that this movie is only as big as it is because of what happened with Brandon Lee's demise, and that's not the case. For me, anyway, th this movie is just tremendous. Um, I think one of the tags on the video cover was the best action fantasy since Terminator 2. I think this movie, personally, for me, is better than Terminator 2. It's got far more rewatchability appeal to me. Brandon Lee could act, he could fight, he had of all the charm that a leading man would need by the, you know, by the bucket load. So, as I said, this movie is based on a comic book, and the comic book was created by James O'Barr, and it was released in 1989 by Calibre Comics. Uh, the comic in itself is almost, well, it is as equally tragic as the movie in real life, as it was created by James Barr in a way of dealing with the grief of the death of his girlfriend at the hands of a drunk driver. Yeah, it's dark. Also, some of the influence was he read about the murder of a couple just before they wed in, in I think it was in a newspaper and that's where sort of that element of the story came in. Um, there are some differences between the movie and the comic book. There's quite a lot of differences. And I, I won't go into them all. I may even do the, the comic book review because it's one of my favorite graphic novels to read. The main difference being that of the dead cowboy. Now the movie was shot with a dead cowboy originally in the movie. And I'll put an image up here. Uh, they cut him out because it took the focus off Eric. And I think having Sarah narrate instead of this really, this film was almost very realistic for a superhero movie. And then having this sort of uh, skeleton cowboy in a bad rubber suit it would have taken away from the film. I think they made the right decision changing the narrator to the Sarah character. The Duck Cowboy was our narrator in the comics. He was also Eric's mentor. Whereas in the movie, Eric's mentor is a psychic link with the bird. He sees through the bird's eyes or can. And the bird sort of helps him track these people down. So to me, the, the elements of Sarah and the crow replacing the cowboy work far better in this movie. In the comic book, the, the dead cowboy works in the comic book. Also, in regards to Brandon Lee's tragic demise, is the fact that the movie was unfinished when he passed away. But the crew basically managed to complete the movie using stand-ins and superimposing Brandon Lee's face over the top of it, or completely obscuring his face in shadow in some scenes. And that sounds bad, um, but it's done with really good effect. And you, there's, there's a shot where lightning lights up his face in the beginning of the film and that is clearly CGI'd but it's done quite tastefully or very tastefully and out of respect for Brandon Lee they wanted to finish this movie so it doesn't take away and unless you know what you're looking for I don't think you'd notice it first time around once you're told about it you can spot some of it a mile off so all these years later this movie it still sits in my top five movies of all time regularly this will be my favorite movie of all time because like most people my opinion changes depending on what I've watched the haunting gothic score of the movie, then the, the rock and metal soundtrack, which just blend into this really tragic, it's the most tragic and dark superhero movie I think I've ever seen. And it's a very tragic and dark action movie in itself. Some of the special effects haven't aged brilliantly. Um, most noticeable is a scene where he's running across rooftops and there's a few bits where that just doesn't look right. Well, I don't think that's because of Brandon Lee's passing because the camera is zoomed out quite far from him. It's just the CGI they used has dated quite badly. So yeah, some of the special effects haven't aged too well. And I do think that a lot of the time Brandon Lee's death does detract a lot from what is an astounding piece of cinema history in this movie. It, the, you know, this movie was a massive pop culture sort of phenomenon. The, the death of Brandon Lee shouldn't detract, it should celebrate how great this movie was. I mean, it's an incredible, awesome, superhero vigilante 
Revenge Tale is violent, it's action packed, it's stylish, yet it's got a lot of heart and a lot of emotion attached to it. It's a very moody looking film, it's very atmospheric. To me, it would have been the career defining moment of Brandon Lee. This would have shot him into superstardom, no doubt about it. Me personally, this movie is a 10 out of 10, all day, every day. I've probably re watched this movie more than any other movie I've ever seen. Go and watch it again because it really is that good. So, I've ignored the sequels called City of Angels, which is part two. Part 3, the crap one, and part 4, the fucking abysmal one. And then there's even a TV show starring Mark Dracoskis, and that basically spends 26 episodes telling the story from the movie all over again. But his makeup magically appears when he gets angry, he rides a motorcycle in the daytime, and it's got none of the heart or the gothic feel or the tragedy of The Crow. And I think that's called The Crow's Stairway to Heaven. And it's shit. Uh, there is a remake that's been in development hell for 10 years or so. And please stay there. Do not remake this movie. Doesn't need it. This movie is perfect as it is. Just leave it alone. There were more comic books came out. There was a, a video game on the Super Nintendo. That was pretty shit because it was based on City of Angels. And it was the worst fighting game I've ever played. Finally, there's... Um, T-shirts, posters, action figures, NECA do them. There's uh, Mafex cloth goods figures. There's an astounding amount of DVDs, Blu-rays, different features, different features and all the rest of it. And there is things like this McFarlane Movie Maniacs. Now the face sculpt isn't brilliant, but this figure is pretty old and pretty dusty bought this for Mrs Geek because she watched The Crow two years ago for the first time and thought it was the best thing she'd ever seen, much like I did as a kid. I picked this up for her. Unfortunately, it was sent to us, opened and taped back together. So it comes with a Movie Maniacs stand that came with like the Freddy Krueger figures, etc. Is Crow, there's a stand for him to actually stand on and there's a guitar strapped to his back. Mrs. Geek has told me I can reopen this for this video, but the video is so long, I'll review this alongside the book, I think, in a separate video. But I do believe I've got to rebuy the book because I lent it to somebody and they nicked it. But that's because it's good. There was the Bearded Geeks The Crow Revisited. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Let me know if you have seen it, if you haven't seen it, what you thought of the video. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all the stuff to help my YouTube channel grow. And maybe I'll do a few more of these sort of nostalgic movie revisited sort of things. So thank you very much for watching. If you've made it to the end, yay, because I'm aware this was going to be a long video before I started it. I hope I've portrayed how much I love this movie. I've gone into sort of a bit more effort by trying to get filmed. Uh, elements of the film in here and soundtrack and all the rest of it because I really do love this movie. In the words of Eric Draven, it can't rain all the time. Goodbye.
Yeah, you